So many economic decisions involve a prediction process about the future. For example, if you want to buy a house, it's a good idea to understand what will happen to house prices in the future. Okay, so if you, if you expect that the price of the houses will go down, then it's probably a good idea to wait. While if you expect they go up, then it's probably a good idea to buy now. Okay? But how rational, how accurate are people when forming these expectations? Uh, do they make mistakes or they are very accurate? And if they make mistakes, do they learn from those mistakes or not? Okay, so I'm going to uh, talk about these issues by using an example, which is quite unusual for economists, but involves my daily commute. So every day I go from my house to the university, I do this by bike, and I've been doing this for almost two years. And uh, basically, I know everything that there is, need, that, that there is to know about this, uh, this trip. I know very well the road, I know when the traffic is intense and when, uh, when it's not. In other words, I know what to expect when I step out of my door. Okay? But then one day I wake up, and I'm in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. Guilford is surrounded by zombies. Okay? Now, as many of you probably, the first instinct is to panic. There are zombies outside. But uh, it's like for Marines, the, the economy strain then kicks in. And then you know if, the, if you think as an economist, you're going to be safe, okay, because economists are the best. Right? So now, the first thing I want to understand is what I should expect when I get out of the, of the door. Uh, I've never been in a zombie apocalypse, so this is a new thing for me. So what will happen? Uh, economists have a few theories on how people uh, predict the future. Okay, so I'm, I, I will say three most important theories. Uh, I'm simplifying a lot. I hope, I hope my colleagues are not going to kill me for this. But uh, the first one is, says basically that I'm an expert in zombies. I know everything that there is to know, as you can understand from my t-shirt. And therefore, I'm going to be very accurate in forming predictions about what happens in a zombie apocalypse, and I'm going to take very good decisions. Okay? We call this the rational expectation theory. Now, there is another theory instead that says, fundamentally, I'm an idiot, okay, and I'm bound to make mistakes. And actually, I'm bound to make mistakes repeatedly. I'm, I'm always going to be repeating the same mistake over and over. So I'm not going to be able to understand that zombies are dangerous, and I'm just going to think there are neighbors uh, having a party in my garden. I'm going to go down with the beers, and I'm going to get killed, of course. Okay? So we call this predictable irrationality, in the sense that I make mistakes, but I always make the same, so I'm predictable in making mistakes. Okay? And then there is a third theory that says, well, I'm an expert in zombies, but there are a lot of variables that I don't know. So zombies can be of different types. There are fast zombies, and there are slow zombies and there are smart zombies and dumb zombies, I don't know which one I'm facing. So it's probably a good idea, before getting out, to look out of the window and see how they are moving. So if I see they move slow, then uh, I'm going to guess, OK, these, these, these guys, they look, these zombies, they look very, very slow. So I can get out of my door. And then when I get out of my door, I realize that they actually run towards me very, very fast. So I was mistaken. But I'm learning from this mistake. Okay? I'm learning, and I'm going to be able to predict uh, the next move of the zombie is better. Okay? We call this the learning theory. Okay? Now, we have all these three theories. Now, the question is, what do real people do? Okay? Let me find out with you. Okay? So I want to play a game with you. It's a very simple game. Okay? The game consists in the following. You have to guess a number between 0 and 100. And then, I'm going to calculate half of the average of all your guesses and the person that has the guess closest to this number wins. OK? The, real, the rules are clear. Let's play this game. What's your guess? 76. OK, OK, OK. I heard a lot of numbers. I'm going to tell you what a very rational crowd would have told me. You would have screamed all together, zero. Okay. So first of all, I think I deceived you a little bit because I told you this is a very simple game. Well, it's not. It's a very complicated game. Think about it. You have to predict the average of, of the guesses of any, any other person in this room. That means that you have to be able to predict what they're going to guess, but also you have to predict how rational they are in this guessing. Okay? 
So it's a very complicated problem. However, uh, imagine that people are quite dumb and they just play randomly. Okay, so if they play randomly, the average is gonna be 50 more or less. So if the average is 50, what you wanna say is 25, which is half of 50, right? And then you're gonna win for sure. But if everybody is as rational as you, then everybody wants to say 25, and then the average is gonna be 25. You have to split the price with uh, the rest of the room. So then you wanna say 12.5, but everybody else wants to do exactly the same. So the only case in which this doesn't happen is if everybody says zero. If everybody says zero, you cannot go down, okay? The average is gonna be zero. The one half of the average is zero, you cannot go below zero, and if you go up, you lose because the average is zero, okay? So the only rational play in this game is zero, but it's a very complicated game, okay? We call this, uh, this result an equilibrium. If everybody says zero, that's the best thing you can say given what the others are, are saying, okay? It's the, it's the most rational thing you can do in this game. So Rosemary Nagel, um, a few years ago, uh, made people play this game in a very controlled environment, and this is what their guesses were. As you can see, they, they look very similar to what, what you have guessed. You know, there is nobody saying zero, by the way, okay? But then Rosemary asked them to play a few more times this game. Okay, I have no time to do it with you, but this is what happens, okay? So here I'm comparing. On the horizontal axis, I have the first, first round guess, and on the vertical axis, I have the second round guess. I'm comparing them. If you see a point, Below the diagonal, that means that the second round guess was lower than the first round guess. So these people were understanding more or less that they had to, to guess a lower number, okay? And they did that also in the third round, and they did that also in the fourth round, okay? I think actually the fourth round is amazing because 50% of these guys, they guessed a number between zero and one, okay? And I think this is remarkable. This is a very complicated game. You have to guess about what the other are guessing and uh, how rational they are. But then, in, uh, in uh, just four rounds of this game, you learn that the, the, the best thing to do is very close to zero. Okay, it's not perfect learning, but it, I think if I don't convince you with this example that people learn, I don't know how to do it, okay? Now, what are the implications of this? Okay, I think people, this is established that people learn. What are the implications? Okay. So let me go back to the zombies, okay? Now, let me change things a little bit. So I think we have established I have rational expectations here. I'm the expert in zombies. Uh, what about zombies? I didn't, I didn't say anything about their behavior. Okay? But since they were humans until yesterday, it's a good idea to assume that they maybe have preserved some uh, human-like behavior. Okay? So I'm going to look at their behavior under the light of these three theories I mentioned at the beginning. Okay? And you can think of these are different stages of the interaction with me. Okay, so in the, at the beginning they look very dumb, they are irrational, but then they learn about how I behave, and, and, uh, and finally they become very, very smart, and they are able to predict every move that I, that I make. Okay? Now, what happens in the first <laughs> periods of interaction? Then they, they look like predictably irrational uh, zombies. Okay? So, for example, they're gonna go straight towards me, in a straight line, never changing direction. And then it's very easy for me to just go around them and go to the university, okay? So if they keep doing this, it's very easy to go to the university every day. But what we have seen is that actually they, they were gonna learn something about my behavior, okay? So what happens after long, long time of interactions between me and the zombies? They're, they're gonna become very, very smart. They're gonna be able to predict uh, my moves very, very well, okay? They become like the rational expectation guy, the guy with a lot of weapons, okay? Now, the issue is here there are two possible equilibria, okay? And they're gonna depend on uh, what they think of me as a cyclist, okay? So first, if they think that I'm a very fast cyclist, then they're gonna think they're, gonna, they're not gonna be able to catch me because I run like, very, very fast. And therefore, they're gonna just stay put. They're not gonna even try to catch me, okay? However, if, uh, sorry, and then for me, the best thing to do would be to go to the university, okay? Let me call this the good equilibrium, okay? So this is a combination of plays in this game in which everybody's doing the best given what the other is doing, 
Uh, and the, good, the, the outcome is very good for me. But there is also a bad equilibrium. And this will depend on the fact that zombies do not think I'm a very fast cyclist. They actually think, they think that I'm a very slow, uh, very slow cyclist. I'm not credible as a fast cyclist, even if uh, I've been doing this for a couple of years, at least in their eyes. Okay? And then they're going to try to catch me. And then, of course, if there are thousands of zombies in Guildford that are trying to catch me, they are bound to catch me. Okay? So I'm going to be very scared to get out of the house. And, and I'm going to stay home. I'm not going to go to the university. And they will eventually break in in my house through the window, and they're going to kill me. Okay? I call this the bad equilibrium. Again, what I'm doing here is the best thing I can do. And what the zombies are doing is the best thing they can do, given what I'm doing. Uh, so it's an equilibrium in this sense. But uh, it's a bad outcome for me. Okay? I get killed. Um, now, what happens when I'm learning? Okay, in the, in the in between the very dumb period and the very rational period. Well, here I have two possible equilibria in the, uh, when zombies become very, very rational. So the one that they are going to learn depends on how I interact with them. Okay? I, can, I can try to make them understand that I'm a very credible fast rider, or I can try to make, him, make them understand that I'm a very slow uh, cyclist. Okay? Which, which equilibrium they're going to learn depends on me. Okay? It's very easy to make them learn. The bad equilibrium, I just stay home and then they're going to understand that I'm not getting out of the house because I'm really scared that they will catch me because I'm slow. Okay? It's also very easy to make them learn the good equilibrium. What I have to do is, since these guys are going to base their prediction on the things they see, I just have to run like crazy in front of them. Okay? Like Armstrong on steroids. Like Armstrong, actually. It's pleonastic to say on steroids. Okay? So I have to run like crazy in front of them. And then they're going to be convinced that I'm a, a very fast cyclist. And if I do this every day, then they're going to keep being convinced that I'm a very fast cyclist. Okay? But then the question is, is this the best thing you can do? And the answer is no. So this is part of my current research with uh, two colleagues, Cristina uh, Molnar and Sergio Santoro. And uh, what we show is actually there is a better strategy. So, the problem here is that it's going to be very costly for me to run like Armstrong every day. I don't know if you have ever cycled, but you get tired. Okay? And uh, I'm pretty sure that in the second day, I'm going to get a heart attack or at least some pole muscles if I run like crazy. Uh, so that might be very costly for me. Okay? Keeping these, these zombies <coughs> believing that I'm a very fast cyclist is going to be very costly for me. So what I can do? So the best, the best thing for me is, first day I, I run like crazy. Then the second day I'm a little bit tired and I'm gonna slow down just a little bit. Just enough to not get a pull muscle or an heart attack, okay? And then somebody's gonna say, okay, yesterday was going at 50 miles per hour, today's 49. Well, on average it's going 49.5. Well, it's still very fast, okay? It looks like it's very fast. And the third day I'm gonna slow down just a little bit more. Okay, and I can do this for a while. You know, I just have to reduce a little bit my speed. And those zombies are going to still be convinced that I'm and fast enough to beat them. Okay? But then, at some point, I'm, I'm going to be slowing too much, and they're going to understand that they can catch me. So they're going to try to catch me. Okay? And if they're going to try to catch me, then I better stay home. And then, in the, at the end of the day, those uh, zombies are going to enter in my house, and they're going to kill me. So what I did here is I chose a strategy that made them learn the bad equilibrium, but it was better than the strategy that made them learn the good equilibrium because it was too costly to keep them convinced that I'm a very fast uh, cyclist. Okay? Now, uh, I'm sure now you are, you are asking yourself what the hell this has to do with economics. Okay? And you would be right. So, First of all, I want to take home that there is a lot of evidence that people are not that stupid. They might, be, they might look very stupid when they first face a new situation, like the zombies, uh, but then they learn, okay? And they become more and more accurate in predicting, uh, in predicting what, they, what the future uh, is promising them, okay? Now, the second thing I want you to take home is the following. Let me call the zombie example variables in a different way. Let me call myself as the policymaker, and let me call the zombies as the society. And those two equilibria are two possible outcomes of some policy choices that I have to make, 
Okay, there is a good one and there is a bad one. And if the one that I reach depends on how the society is learning about the, the, the implementation of the policy that I'm choosing. Okay, and, and we show with Christina and Sergio that there are cases in which it's very costly to make the society learn the good outcome. And it might be a good idea to just get as close as the, the good outcome as long as possible. Okay, and then just give up and get to the bad outcome. It's kind of a bad result, but this is, this is what research is. Sometimes we have to give you bad news. Okay? And the third thing I want to bring home is the following. You need to learn more about zombies. Because then when the zombie apocalypse is going to hit us, you're going to be able to make very good prediction of what will happen. You're going to make very good choices and you're going to survive. Okay? Thank you very much. <laughs>